over the eyes. I need thee. And Jesus, verse number one. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wind. Yes. And, and they would not come. And again, beloved, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner. Yes. My oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready. Please come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways and one to his farm, another to his mercies. Yes. And, and the remnant took, oh my God, somebody say the remnant. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. They killed them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready. But they which were bidden or were able to come were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, go out on kinsmen, union, and as many unto the highways, and gather together all as many that are found. Watch this church, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with gas. Can I just finish the thought here? And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. Tells your neighbor he was not dressed. And he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He had not a word to say. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, my God, for many are called Timothy's, but few are chosen. Somebody let's give God a praise in this place. I, I want to talk to you from this subject Proper attire required. Proper attire required. I remember when I was a young man growing up, and I was always excited, Darvell, about the first day of school. Family, I don't know about you or if you can recollect back in your minds, but it was something that was so spectacular about getting ready for the first day of school. I would go weeks preparing to put my, uh, my gear together to make sure I made a favorable impression from day number one. Because I understood in order to be popular with the girls, proper attire was required. Y'all talk back to me. I remember my first pair of Nikes, well, they probably was more like Ikes because they were so old that the end had came off the tennis shoe. My older cousin had sent them to me because in Cleveland, we didn't have any Nikes yet. We had pro kids and slip and slides and uh, da, 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 yeah, so, uh, but you know, but my, my cousin Dennis, bruh, sent me these pair of Nikes and I shined them up and polished them up and they still looked rough, but the fact that they had the word Nike on them, it separated me from the rest of the kids who was still in their slipping slides. Y'all talk back to me and I understood at a very young age that there's something associated with how you look to how people are going to treat you. Y'all talk back to me. Jesus is painting a picture of the rejection by the nation of Israel. He warns them of their certain doom, which was accomplished right around 70 AD. He is also telling them of his intention to fill the father's house with people other than themselves. 
the king in the parable sends his servants out to find other guests to come to the wedding celebration. And as they gather themselves together, the king notices a man in the company who does not have on his wedding attire. This man is cast out of the wedding celebration. These verses paints a picture of salvation. Somebody say salvation. When Israel rejected Jesus as their Messiah, he turned unto the Gentiles, which is us. Somebody say he turned to us. Because the Lord intends to fill heaven with the redeemed from the earth. And, and God had got tired of sending out invitations or the king invitations and nobody would come. Only those who have a personal relationship with the Lord will be admitted into God's heaven. You got to have a personal relationship. The Bible tells us that when the redeemed of the Lord gather together there in heaven, that will be a marriage at that day. There will be a time of celebration known as the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we find this in Revelations 19, 7 through 9. But the Bible doesn't say a lot about the marriage supper of the Lamb, Pastor Lucky, Pastor Edwards. Uh, but, but the Bible makes it very clear that there's one thing worth noting. And verse number 8 tells us that if you're going to come to this heavenly celebration, you better be dressed with proper attire. As we look at the events of this parable and at the fact that those who are saved by grace will meet us in heaven and will be dressed in white robes as we prepare for the marriage of the Lamb. It seems to me that the garment in this utmost importance when it comes to the time for the wedding, it seems like from the Bible you must be dressed properly or you will not be admitted. You need to be absolutely certain that you will be clothed in proper attire when you reach your earthly and heavenly journey. Verses 9 through 10. So today's sermonic material, we will not be in what we know as our traditional expository, where we go verse by verse by verse. We're going to stay with a textual theme, which means we will use these verses, but we'll pull and extract pieces of meat at different times. Is that okay? Verses 9, verses number 10 says that uh, the king sent his service into the highways, literally the wide places or the plazas to gather together all that found. And, and he was concerned about their character. He was not concerned about their character. He wasn't concerned about their past. He wasn't concerned about their social standing. He wasn't concerned about how much money they made. He wasn't concerned about whose name they was. He wasn't concerned about what their intent was. All he wanted to do was for them to come. This is how God's house has to be. We as a body of believers need to be mindful of how we judge, how we want to pick and choose who can attend and who cannot attend God's house. That's not your responsibility. That's not your place. It's not up to you to decide who can come into God's house. You better be glad that God loves you enough to have woken you up this morning and made your way to the household of faith. Stop looking at him. Stop looking at her. Stop trying to figure out what their problem is and look in the mirror and get your own issues resolved because you need to be focused on you and not everybody else. And family, when the church ever gets to the place where we stop pointing fingers and we stop judging and all we say is, listen, I'm just glad you're here. I'm just glad you're here. You know why I'm glad you're here? Because if you're at least in the house, then you're going to be able to get some medicine while you're in the hospital. The worst thing for any sick person to do is say they don't need no help. Y'all talk back to me. You ever been around somebody and they've been sick and they've been coughing, they've been sweating, and they've been doing all this for two, three weeks, and you say, have you been to the doctor? No, I ain't been to the doctor. But what you waiting on? Oh, I'm going to just keep trusting the Lord. Well, you, gonna, you can trust the Lord all you want to. But you at some point need to be smart enough to understand the reason that God allowed us to have medicinal purposes on this side was so that we can get healed. Now, now you got to take your steps towards man to see what God has in store because you can go ahead and pray, but you better take that aspirin while you pray. Y'all talk back to me.
Uh, and that's how we come into God's house. We sick and, and we're lying and we're manipulators and we're all this. And God is saying, I got medicine for you. It's in the word of God. I got everything you need, every sickness, every diabetes. I don't care what you got. I got something for you in the word of God that's going to point you in the right direction and you're going to get the help you need. But you got to know proper attire is required. This is a picture of what the Lord has done for us, his plan of salvation. When the Lord formulated his plan of salvation, he prepared a way that was open to all men from all walks of life. God's plan is available to whoever will come. Somebody say whoever. Somebody say whoever. No, somebody say whoever. Within that little word, whoever is encapsulated, the lives of everyone who walks the face of this earth, God's word is available to whoever wants to be saved. And he's not looking at who you are. He's not looking at what you did. He's concerned about the fact that you are his child and you belong to him. And he's saying, come because you are included in that whosoever. Watch this, Romans 10 and 9 to 10 and 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. Y'all, you know what? For a long time, I didn't have an understanding of what salvation meant and how it was applicable in my life. Because I merely thought that as long as my mother went to church and as long as my mother prayed and as long as my mother said that her baby was saved, then her baby was saved. But it wasn't until I got a little bit older, maybe around 11 or 12 or 13, and I realized even back then that my mother's prayers and her conversations, Kevin, could only take me so far. There was a step that I had to make for myself. And I remember, Renee, on that Sunday morning at New Light Baptist Church, my pastor, uh, Pastor V.J. Weathersby, uh, got to preaching the sermon, Peasy, and something about the Word of God penetrated my spirit. And I didn't even know, but at 11 years old, he was speaking salvation over my life. And I decided at that time that I needed to be saved because I want to go where they going. I want to go to heaven too at 11 years old. Y'all talk back to me. Revelations 22 and 17 says this, Chris, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let them take of the water of life freely. Y'all, it's amazing that they charge for everything. Would y'all have a thought 20 years ago that they would be charging us for a bottle of water? And can I just hit a pause real quick? Don't y'all drink that giant eagle water because that giant eagle water is not purified. Y'all go somewhere and find some real purified water. I found out it wasn't purified because I put it in my humidifier and it made the whole bottom of the humidifier turn into this white chalky like mud. And it lets me know that this water is not purified. They just put it on the bottle and we don't know where this water came from. And we being charged for water that's, man, listen, you can get the same water out the sink. I put ice in my cup, and I put my cup under the tap water, because when we was growing up, guess what? That's all that we had. Uh, can you make it make sense for us today, Pastor? Uh, when I was at 11 years old, and I heard the word of God, and I knew that that water of living life would save my soul, I said, I don't need no water from nowhere else, because the water that Jesus gives me, guess what? It is free, and whoever the sun sets free, free is what is free indeed and I come to tell you today that God wants all of us saved somebody say he wants us saved man but proper attire is required uh, yeah, yeah, and guess what now notice that the king sent out his servants to invite people to the wedding again this is a picture of salvation while anyone can be saved they must be saved by grace before anyone can be saved. They must be called by the Lord. This is why I tell people, it's okay to invite people to church, but don't invite them to see Pastor Simmons. I give one good sermon a year. That's my Easter speech. Amen, somebody. I, sometimes I'll get Jesus wept. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Don't invite people to see me. 
Don't invite people to see the praise team. Don't invite people so that you can come and be my neighbor. You want people to come because they have been pierced and convicted by the Holy Spirit. And God is aligning them with his word, will, and his way. Now, are you saying, Pastor, we shouldn't invite people? That's not what I'm saying. But if you invite them, say, hey, hey, come, let's celebrate Jesus. Not let's come celebrate Mount Pleasant. Y'all talk back to me. John 6 and 44 says it this way. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. I must be drawn by the Father to Jesus in order to want to have a right relationship. Because if I draw unto uh, Reggie or I draw unto Deacon Harris, it's just a matter of time before them jokers going to disappoint me. But I ain't never Ricky been disappointed in Jesus. Uh, y'all getting this? Is it hot in here? Y'all falling asleep? It's too hot? If you got to stand up and shake, go on shake. Just don't bump your neighbor. Hey, man, somebody. Listen, you can only be saved when the Lord is dealing with your heart. Herein lies one of the most dangerous areas of salvation. Please hear me, church. Many people feel convicted by their sins and put God off for whatever reason. They believe that they will be saved, but that they will be able to do it when they are ready. How many folk do you hear sitting at home saying, listen, listen, I'm almost this close. I'm coming to the house of God, but I got to get a few more things in order. We hear this from folk all the time, and I constantly tell them, if you could fix it, it would already be fixed. The Bible teaches us that Jesus, in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He didn't wait until you got your act together. He didn't wait until you got all the things in your life taken care of. He didn't wait until you got uh, uh, your mission in life, your mission statements, your convictions, all these other things. He did not wait for us because he would still be on the cross just waiting for me. Y'all will get it in a minute. What is dangerous is this. God has promised to deal with all men, John 1 and 9 says. But however, he has not promised to call them repeatedly. Genesis 6 and 3 teaches us that there will come a day after the spirit of God has been turned away when God will no longer deal with the lost heart. Oh, my God. He's saying, come on. But he also said, I ain't going to stay here forever now. Can I say it that way? Make it make sense? Amen. Hebrews 12 15 says, see to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no one roots up bitterness, springing up causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. There's a lot of people that distract you from getting what God has for you. And this is why you have to be careful of who you're in covenant relationship with. Because sometimes people will only promote you as long as it's promoting themselves. <laughs> see, 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 I, I, I've been around people that when Pastor, name, when Pastor Simmons' name was jumping and his name was popping, boy, folk was all over. That I, I couldn't even move without somebody being up under me. Let me be this for you, Pastor. Let me be that for you. When, when you're looking at four, 500 members and, 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 and Mount Pleasant, one of the biggest churches uh, in the city, growing at such a rapid pace, folk all up under you. But then all of a sudden, for logistical purposes, we had to come back to the small church and them same folk that was all up under my arm now they know where to be found you know why because people find that it's easier to connect themselves to something that's already moving forward see it's easy to connect with people that's already paid it's easy to connect with people that already got it going on it's easy to connect with folk who already got a bright future but when you a real friend and you really love somebody they cannot have nothing at all but you still stay by their side because that's what 
what it's all about. And this is what Jesus is saying. Stop letting folk uproot you while you're on your way to your destiny. I got too much to give for you to be holding me back. God then brought me too far for me to be connected with people who only want to get enough. Uh, there's a lot of folk in here right now that's just satisfied with only having just enough. You better tell them, man, you better get your just enough self away from me because I'm coming to get all that God got in store for me, everything that he promised me, everything he said he'd give me, and guess what? I'm going to have on the proper attire when he calls my name. Maurice, turn me up a little bit. If a person, there we go, if a person fails to respond to the call of the Lord for salvation, there's always a danger of stepping over God's deadline and condemning your soul to hell. If the Lord has been calling you to be saved, come today, do it now while there's still time to get it right. You got to come today. Tomorrow is not promised. And even if tomorrow comes, doesn't mean that tomorrow is going to be a great day. But I've come by to tell you today, beloved, that because I'm up, because I'm breathing, because I can see, because I can hear, because I can taste, because I can smell, because I'm able to put one foot in front of the other, guess what? I'm going to be robotic in my motion as it relates to giving God everything I got. My praise will continuously be in my mouth. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to give God everything I got because he gave me everything he had. It was common, it was common. It, it, it just, make sure that heat's not on. Y'all make sure that heat's not on. Oh, Y'all in here got me sweating like I done stole something. It, it was common, it was common in weddings involving the wealthy people, watch this, to provide each guest with a white wedding garment. Can y'all imagine that today? That if you get invited to a wedding, that the wedding party sends you out white garments to wear. Now, because we black, most of us ain't going to wear what we was told to wear anyway, right? We're going to show up with polka dots, squares, blocks. We're going to show up with everything other than what the wedding party told us to wear. Y'all stop looking at me like I'm the crazy one. Y'all already know it. Y'all already know it. Oh, man, my Gucci don't go with that. My, man, I'm wearing my Prada that day. Y'all better, y'all going to be all right. But guess what? When, when you find out that proper uh, attire is required, you better get it together. They would give them garments, and they would then wear it to the wedding when the day arrived. Again, what a picture of salvation. The day that a person accepts the Lord's invitation to Jesus and salvation, that person receives what's called a robe of righteousness. So where we may not get white garments, as soon as you say I do, you get a white robe. Ah. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that robe goes with everything. When, when the Lord... Oh, my God, I, I'm, I'm about to shout because I'm thinking about those who have died before me and how they must be in line getting fitted for their long white robes. And I know that one day when this is all said and done, when this is all over, when the choir robes are mildewed and the hymnals are dusty, one day God's going to call me to that place and he's going to fit me with my long white robe. I don't have to wear what you wear. God got something greater coming later, but proper attire is required those of us who are excited about going to heaven that's reason to shout I, I know a lot of stuff I buy down here don't fit me the right way but I bet you my robe gonna fit just right here it's gonna be perfectly tailored uh, to fit my body I might be built like a question mark when I turn to the side right now but when I, <laughs> but when I get in heaven 
Y'all, I realized that the other day. I turned to the side. I said, Lord, I'm built like a question mark. I'm... I ain't going to tell y'all what some of y'all, so you might just watch this. You better, if you're not, if you're at a church where you can't learn to laugh, you better go somewhere else. Life is too hard to be serious about everything. Life is too hard and it's too short. You have to enjoy God's word and God's people. Listen, it is received by faith. The way we get to the wedding garment is it's simply by faith. It is given to those who place their faith in Jesus alone for salvation. Watch this. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace ye have been saved through what? Through faith. And, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man can boast. You have been saved by the grace of God through faith. That's it. You know, you got folk in church telling you you got to speak in tongue, you got to tarry, you got to foam at the mouth, you got to do all this stuff. And the word of God is not teaching us that. It says, for by grace you have been saved, what? Through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man can boast. Your singing, your preaching, your praying, none of those things will get you in heaven. It's your faith in God and God's ability to redeem us is the only way we get in. But you got to have on proper attire. No one will ever get their wedding garment by being religious. Oh, my God. Did y'all hear that? No one will ever get their wedding garments by being religious or by being good. Y'all know one of the things that troubles a lot of us in church today are these religious, righteous, uh, self-righteous people who think that they're better than everyone else. They walk around with their nose in the air as if though they don't stink. Amen, somebody. And you don't have room for that. Do you not know if God had not chosen to be good to you, then you could be somewhere outside under a bridge in the mental hospital, uh, kill about trying to kill yourself, commit suicide. God chose you to be good to you. And because he chose to be good to you, you should be good to other people. Family, do you know it does not take a lot to say, hey, hello, how you doing? Have a great day. That's all. It does not take a lot. What takes a lot is when you telling lies on folk and you trying to remember who you done lied on to and you can't remember. So now you have a tough conversation. Y'all talk back to the preacher. I, I don't lie anymore. You know why? Because it's too hard to lie. I done got too old to lie. I'm going to tell you the truth whether you like it or whether you don't. Guess what? Because that's much easier for me to remember. And guess what? I'd rather take a hard a, a truth than a soft lie any day. <laughs> Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Tell your neighbor, it changes in your heart. This garment, y'all give me five minutes. This garment cannot be purchased at any price. It is received only when faith in the gospel message has been exercised. You can't go and get these garments at the store. <laughs> Y'all know how we see somebody with something that we like and is nice and we ask them where it's at and only because we thinking that we just giving them a compliment. But two weeks later, we go out and find it and we buy it for ourselves and it don't fit the way that on, on you that it fit on them because they built like this and you built like this. And see, I know it says one size fits all, but, but it wasn't talking to you. That wasn't applicable when you built like a box. Now, now you may have to go and find you something somewhere else. And, and <laughs> Where my box folk at? <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. 
ain't nothing wrong with being the box, baby. Tell somebody you, you, <laughs> I can't say that now, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did stop. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. I said the Lord, we're going to finish this, is blessing me, come on Chris, right now, oh right now, y'all know what he did, he woke me up this morning, and he started me on my is blessing me right now oh right now can we say it one more time Chris listen he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way the doors of the church are open the Lord the doors are open is blessing me the doors of the church are right now. Oh.